So anyway, the Saints got into the holiday by keeping up the winning spirit, stealing a victory in Pittsburgh today. That's the most important win in franchise history because it guarantees for the first time ever in 21 years the Saints' uh, winning season. Their fifth straight came on a day when they were certainly beatable. I felt like when the game was over, we should come in, just grab our stuff and go shower somewhere else. Let's get out of here before they call it back. All right, Stan Brock wasn't kidding. Saints uh, took a 3-0 lead in the first quarter when their special team, Johnny Poe, got it on their sixth punt block or kick block of the year. It led to Morton Anderson's boot. And then Bobby Hebert, who had a bad day for the most part, this is a horrendous overthrow. Dwayne Woodruff intercepts it, gets some nice blocking, goes 33 yards, Steelers lead 7-3. Reuben Mays, the Saints' leading rusher on the day, fumbles here as uh, Pittsburgh recovers, and that leads to Walter Abercrombie's touchdown from the 5, 14-3. Steelers at the half, and you wonder what this guy had to say in the locker room. Well, you can figure it out. Third quarter, ball control drive capped with Mays, scoring for the touchdown, making it 14-10. And the defense solid all day. Pat Swilling causing the fumble here at the Saints uh, offense. though failed to do anything with it. So they get the ball back. Steelers intercepted this time by Johnny Poe. But again, the Saints offense fails to do anything with it. Then on Rod Woodson's punt return in the final quarter, great hit by Joel Colbrand. The ball loose. This time they capitalize. About eight minutes left. And Bear hits Sarek Martin's 17-14 lead. Malone, the worst uh, starting quarterback in football, throws one of his three interceptions here. Milton Mack leads to a field goal for a 20 to 14 lead. Then the defense makes it stand with this great goal line stand on fourth down. Frank Pollard is smothered and kept out. They had four shots from inside the four, but still a minute to go. Mora on his toes takes a safety out of his own end zone purposely. The Steelers still have to go for the touchdown to win. They almost did it, but Malone throws another interception as the time expires and the Saints move uh, closer to the playoffs, the final again, 20 to 16. Now their record eight and three, assuring the first ever winning season for this franchise. The, the, there's two things really about achieving the first winning season. One is it makes our record eight and three, you know, and that's important at this stage. And uh, yeah. this win gives us eight wins against three losses. That's that's number one, and number two, by achieving this, uh, people can no longer say and write and talk about that the Saints are the only NFL team never to have a winning season. And we've, we've eliminated that. These guys have eliminated that. All right, but the Saints are still like 48,000 hardy Steelers fans attended the game at Three Rivers Stadium. Temperature about 48 at kickoff, a 70% chance of rain. Ricky Jackson starred at the University of Pittsburgh and turned in the day's first sack, trapping Mark Malone for a loss of 10. Well, I was, I was inspired very well. I was inspired most of all because I know they were going to let me go today. You know, that was the key to it. Johnny Poe came up with another partially blocked punt, his second in two weekends, to put the Saints at the 10. Buford Jordan ran it 13 to get it there. That was the case where uh, the force was trying to bump two guys, myself and Mike Adams on the outside. And I am doing just knocking his hands down and going for the ball. And when I saw him going, look for the ball, and when he hit it, I saw it go up. Couldn't catch it on the flight, so I just picked it up on the bounce, tried to get to the end zone. The Saints had to settle for three, Morton Anderson from 25, and it's 3-0 New Orleans. But Pittsburgh got that back and more. When Bobby Abair overthrew Lonzel Hill, Dwayne Woodruff picked it off, then ran 33 yards for a go-ahead touchdown. The game was marred with turnovers. On a fake reverse, Mays was hit by Mike Merriweather. The ball popped loose, and Merriweather chased it down to end the scoring threat. Now watch this one. Malone's pass is deflected and caught, but a penalty was called for pass interference. Remember Franco Harris's catch in 1972? Abercrombie scored from the five, capping a 75-yard, 10-play drive. 14-3 Steelers. Now watch this one, too. The kickoff bounces to number 67, offensive tackle Stan Brock, who gets 11 yards straight ahead. I didn't get much blocking out of some of them guys. I think they were, they were looking and trying to see how they were going to do it. And, uh, but I, again, like I said before, if I can get to the corner, I'm gone. I don't think there's anybody who can catch me if I can get outside on it. Pittsburgh led 14-3 at the half, but the Saints drove 86 yards in 13 plays in the third quarter. Reuben May scoring from the five to make it 14-10 Steelers. Pat Swilling had a big day with two sacks, one here that forced a fumble that was recovered by Sam Mills. 
I was just in a good spot to see it coming out. You know, I, I saw Pat strip him, and I was just able to just pick it up and try, try to run. Johnny Poe added another turnover with an interception when Malone tried going to 14-year veteran John Stallworth. That was a play where we had a double on Stallworth, and all through the day, Stallworth had been running option routes when he was one-on-one. -on -one. And so we had a double call between myself and Van Jake. We pushed Van Jake to the outside and tried to curl back in, and I was sitting in there waiting. Another turnover, another takeaway occurred early in the fourth quarter. Abercrombie hit by Bruce Clark, and Gene Atkins recovered. We had to come up with the big plays. It's something we've been, had the opportunity to do all year. The fourth quarter was a quarter of big plays and takeaways. Another on this Brian Hansen punt. Rookie Rod Woodson hit by Joe Colbrand loses his grip, and Dave Wehmer grabbed it. The Saints grabbed the lead for good when Bobby Bear hit Eric Martin from 19 yards out, making it 17-14 Saints. Well, we had uh, maximum protection. It was an 98 X flag, which I run a corner, and Bobby just threw a perfect pass. You know, we uh, went up by two or three points. But the day belonged to the defense. Rookie Milton Mack picked this pass off to help set up another scoring drive. Morton Anderson drilled this one from 32 to give the Saints a six-point lead at 20 to 14. Perhaps the play of the day, though. Fourth and goal at the one. Fullback Frank Pollard is stopped by Jim Wilkes, Brett Maxey, and Sam Mills for no gain. Well, you know, I, I thought it was a good defensive call, first of all, and uh, we, we, we were anticipating run. They gave us the run, and the guys up front did a, a super job. Uh, Jimmy Wilkes, Vaughn Johnson did a great job on that side of, of, of just shutting down the hole, and uh, I was able to come in from the back side and help clean it up. That's the huddle with less than two minutes to go in a fourth down play. The Saints preparing to make history, a history-making day in Pittsburgh. Facing that situation, the Saints elected to take a safety, giving Pittsburgh two points, but allowing Hanson a free kick. Swilling second sack of the day came on first and goal from the three with time running out. And the final takeaway came on the final play. Malone intercepted by David Wehmer, and the Saints are assured of their first winning season. Before I went out there on that last drive, I told Carl Smith, I said, if I pick one off, I'm going to give it to you. And uh, he'll probably remember it a lot. You know, I'll remember it, but it'll mean quite a bit more to him, I'm sure, just to have it. But that was, you know, I, I've got the memory. He's got the ball.